Here I have with me a tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is a triangular pyramid. A triangular pyramid has a triangular base. So for example, if this is the base of the pyramid, I put this base on the floor and there is this vertex or the apex, the sharp point of the pyramid. And if I drop a perpendicular line from here inside the pyramid, it goes all the way down to the base and it touches the base in the center, the triangular base. Of course, being a tetrahedron, a triangular pyramid, I can make this side the base and this becomes the apex. It's the same. So all the triangles are of the same size, of the same shape, they are of the same measurement, same angle, they are equilateral triangles. Now let us look at the net of the tetrahedron. You can see the four faces, one, two, three, four. And when I fold this, it becomes a pyramid, a triangular pyramid. Here is a square pyramid. A square pyramid has a square base. When we put the pyramid on the ground, there is the vertex or the apex. And if we drop a perpendicular line from inside this vertex all the way down to the floor of the pyramid, that perpendicular line touches the square in the center. The pyramid has five faces, four triangles and one square. One, two, three, four, four faces and the base is also considered a face. So there are five faces, four triangles and one square. In this example, the triangles are isosceles triangles with these two sides equal and the third side being different. But it doesn't need to be this way. The triangles can be equilateral triangles. And in this example, the vertex or the apex is in the middle. If you have an apex or a vertex that is not in the center of the pyramid, it means that the triangles are not all equal. They are different. And you should also notice that a pyramid has two heights. One height is the vertical height, the height that goes in the middle of the pyramid all the way down to the floor. That is a vertical height. There is another height though for a pyramid and that is the slant height. And this is the height that is one side of the triangle. Here we look at the net and of course you see the square base with the four triangles. We're going to fold this net and it will fold up to form the square base pyramid. Now let us look at the cone. The cone is a pyramid with a round base. If we put the cone on the table, we can drop a perpendicular line from inside the cone from the vertex to the floor of the cone and that line will touch the base in the center. That is known as the vertical height of the cone. Like any other pyramid, the cone also has a slant height. That would be this length here, the slant height of the cone. Let us look at the net of this cone. If you look at the net, you will notice that this was once part of a big circle that was cut out to form this shape. And this here is the radius of that big circle. And the arc here was once part of the circumference of the big circle. When we fold this net to form the cone, the radius becomes the slant height of the cone. This slant height of the cone is actually the radius of the circle that was cut out to form the net. And this arc here becomes the, the circumference of the base 
which is a circle. So it becomes the circumference of this whole circle and this was the arc that was part of a big circle. We have here a pentagonal pyramid. A pentagon is a five-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five. And this is the base of the pyramid. The vertex or the apex of the pyramid is in the center here. And if we drop a perpendicular line from inside this pyramid from the vertex, we will hit the floor of the pyramid at the center of the pentagon. So here is the net of the pentagonal pyramid. We have the base and the five triangles that form the face. One, two, three, four, five, the walls of the pyramid. If we were to fold this up like that, the five walls will um, make a solid with the base. And then we will have that pentagonal pyramid. Here is a hexagonal pyramid. A hexagon is a six-sided figure. We count the sides one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is the base of the pyramid. We place the pyramid on the surface of the table and we have this vertex or the apex. When we drop a perpendicular line from the middle inside this pyramid to the floor, that line will touch the floor at right angle and it will be in the center of the hexagon. That is the vertical height of the pyramid. So this pyramid has um, six walls because the base has six sides. If you look at the net, you will see six of these triangles and the base. So that when we fold this shape, the walls of the, the, walls of the pyramid forms a solid with the base.